I promise I really am trying to wind down this Ocean Gate Titan thing, but I just keep discovering more and more quirky things about it. Here's something that you might find very interesting. There are actually three wiring ports in the rear interface ring of the Ocean Gate Titan. I don't have any great views of them, and what pictures I do have aren't very good quality, but here's what I do know about the two ports on the right rear at about 5 o'clock position. In these pictures, you can see these two ports on the lower right side when the sub was being put together before any of the stuff was installed into the tail framework. After making the discovery from an interview with Stockton Rush where he said that data ports were needed in the titanium parts and then re-reviewing the debris video, I noticed this notch in the interface ring. The lines are just too perfect to be leftover carbon bits, and besides, the carbon fiber tape was wound around the spandrel like an enormous roll of tape. So if any carbon was left behind, it would not look so nice and tidy, and certainly not in a very neat shape like that. You can see a little piece of tubing still attached to one of the wiring ports here. That corresponds with this location in this picture of the exposed tail. In this picture, we can see one of these ports when the sub was operational. You can clearly see one of these giant nuts with the small tubes coming out of it. I assume that these were for a valve inside that would have been turned, which in turn would have dropped the ballast. The hydraulic pump would have been in the tail somewhere. Um, the one above for that is for wiring. So if this notch is an artifact of the implosion, how could the lines be so perfectly straight? Could a chunk of the titanium broke off in such a nice piece like that? Here we can see the entirety of the internal and external systems while it was being built and tested. I assume that this was done concurrently with the manufacturing and testing of the carbon fiber cylinder, so that when they got it back, all the stuff would just go straight into the hole and it would get done quicker. They seem to be kind of in a hurry to get this done. So all of this stuff was prefabricated and tested in the meantime. Notice that all the items in the tail section are in a mock-up frame, and in the foreground are the three computers and the framework that was inserted into the rear hemisphere. On the lower left, we can see two giant nuts with two more giant nuts on the other side of what I presume is a hollow tube that these wires pass through. You can clearly see these wires going to them. Remember earlier I showed you those two wiring ports? Well, there's still one more of these fittings on the far left. That means that there were actually three wiring ports and not two. I have not really been able to find any good pictures of the left side of the rear end of the Titan, but in this picture you can just make out what appears to be the location of some more ports in the area that I would expect them to be in. It appears that for the electrical connections, Ocean Gate used off-the-shelf connectors that were used in ROVs that service offshore drilling and submarine cable in the deep ocean. Hydraulic tubing and fittings rated for these pressures and depths are readily available too. The valve for operating the hydraulics and the external high-pressure air tank are apparently from Autoclave Engineers, a company known for high-pressure hardware. It would appear that the port for the hydraulics were installed after this picture was taken when they actually had the, the hole and the interface rings and everything all together. At this point, I can't determine if there was one or two notches in the interface ring. It may have only been one. Your guess is as good as mine. So perhaps this apparent big notch in the rear interface ring had to do with the pressure block that actually connected two systems together. And by use of a valve switching between one or the other, one was used to drop the ballast, and the other one would have been the one used to drive up the frame pins. This would make a lot more sense as the frame pins really ought to be on a hydraulic system and not pneumatic as like what Bruce Morton said in that interview in 2021. We have multiple safety systems. I didn't get into that. If the drop weight system were to fail, the backup is to uh, use a hydraulic pump to release some pins and that drops uh, the weight carriage. So the whole weight carriage would drop. If that fails, uh, we have another hydraulic system where you just, you turn a lever and then you pump some more and it, um, it there's some, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, some hydraulic, it's not, it's, it's not hydraulic. It's uh, it's more of a, an air um, pump. It's 
second airplane plan, that uh, pulls some pins and it drops all the legs. My previous video about the frame release mechanism is based on him saying that it was, it was a pneumatic system, it was an air pump. So in light of this valve being inside the hole, I have come to the conclusion that both systems were hydraulically operated and that what Bruce Morton, the OceanGate engineer that designed these systems, said was incorrect. A pneumatic system would have been incapable of doing the job considering the massive hydrostatic pressure involved at depth and, and not really being designed for such an application. By bringing this valve inside the crew compartment, it means that hydraulic lines had to go from that valve and through the hole to the hydraulic pump. I only see two lines coming out of that port that we saw earlier. Since there's an apparent notch in the interface ring and there's two separate systems being switched by this valve, it leads me to believe that possibly a fifth hole penetrator was needed. It could also be that one of these wiring ports was actually only used on the inside, as can be seen here. So now we would be back to only four ports. I think this is more likely. It seems to me it would be an arrangement like this. Hydraulic pump in the tail section. I presume a three-way valve inside to switch between the systems. Two pairs of lines going through the hole to the drop landing gear and drop cylinder weight system actuators all of which are connected to a manifold block where the notch in the interface ring is. I assume that the block manifold would have been epoxied into the notched area. Now, I could be misunderstanding how this worked, but I don't see how you can switch between two separate systems with only one pair of hydraulic lines going to what appears to be a hydraulic pump. In any case, I hope you found this aspect of the Titan as interesting as I did.